Hello my beautiful friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we have another fun pregnancy video. They are my absolute most fun videos to make right now. Still totally out of breath, it's just part of it. But today we're gonna talk about how I knew or sort of had an inkling that I was pregnant, the symptoms that I was facing before I actually took a test. Before we get started, let me breathe, but I just wanna show you this adorable little shirt that Adam got me for Christmas. I'll show you my little non-existent bump. But actually, it's kind of a little bit more bloated than usual right now because I just finished an egg roll bowl. My friend Sarah, why, who's watching this, I'm sure, taught me this trick when she was dieting. I love it, you just take some coleslaw mix and you cook it up. I use tofu, she use, uses chicken or shrimp or something like that with either teriyaki sauce or I used Kung Pao sauce, a little bit of that and some sesame seeds and some nuts or whatever you feel. It's fun, wasabi peas, something like that. And it tastes like the inside of an egg roll, but a much healthier version. I'm telling you that to say that your girl has a little bit of a bloated blump, I think you call it. Get it? Bloated bump going on because I just hit 12 weeks on Thursday. Today is Monday, so 12 and a half weeks. And yes, something is there, but not too, too much. So I think it might be easier if I take a picture because this is me poking it all the way out, but there's really not much there yet. And then Adam got me this shirt for Christmas. It is so adorable. You wonder what he wants, if he wants a girl or a boy, because it says, here's to strong women. And then on the back, I will take a picture of it to make it easier for you guys to see. But it says, let me read it. It says, may we know them, may we be them, may we raise them. Oh, this is going to be a tough video because I really, I can't breathe. Actually, I'm going to the doctor tomorrow and I'm going to talk to, I'm seeing the male doctor. There's a male and a female doctor in the practice. I'm going to talk to him about it because yesterday I actually got scared. I scared Adam. I was really short of breath all day, a little more than usual, but then, how do I say this for YouTube? We did some couples exercise, if you know what I mean. And after we were done exercising, I was like, <gasps> I can't breathe. Like literally I was like, I can't breathe. And then I had to like sit up really quick and I took a huge gasp of air like, <gasps> and I couldn't get it. And then I had to take another one and I finally got a full breath of air which scared the crap out of me. His face, like all the color drained out of his face. He was like, are you okay? You're scaring me. And I was fine after that, but I don't know why. I, I, I guess it's normal. Like my first doctor's appointment four weeks ago, they told me it was more normal, but this is a little bit more than you'd think. I, I don't know. I could be fine. I could be wrong. I feel fine. Like no COVID symptoms or anything like that. I feel great. I actually went for a run before. Breathing was okay during that. I went a lot slower than usual and I took breaks when I needed to, but, and I only went like two and a half miles, not a big deal, but do you care? Probably not. I'm three minutes in and I'm babbling. So let's talk about early pregnancy symptoms and how I knew I was pregnant prior to taking a test. I was only two days late for my period, but I am on the money as far as being regular typically. Yeah, maybe two or three days every once in a while. Like I'm talking once a year, it would be like four or five days late almost every time. That was before Adam and I were, you know, sexually active. So it didn't really phase me, but ever since we've been sexually active, like to the day I had a period tracker app and it was always on the money, but I just knew I had this feeling. Pregnancy brain, so I did take some notes. It is a sparkly pink notebook, but that's not baby related. I got this before I knew I was pregnant. Oh, and next thing, I'm filming in this room. I feel like good vibes in this room. This is going to be our nursery. This is our spare guest bedroom right now. There is no innuendos or subliminals or anything going on with the blue. We picked this out for our spare bed. When we set up the guest room, we just actually, believe it or not, got the guest bathroom shower curtain first. Then when we got the bed, we found the exact same pattern, exact same, I didn't do it on purpose, but the exact same company made a comforter set. So that's why we have blue going on right now. It's not, I'm not insinuating boy or girl. We don't know yet, it's too early. Okay, so but probably the week before, it could have been like a week and a half to two weeks before, but the week before I was due to get my period and I was pregnant, but I didn't know it yet. 
I had the most vivid dreams. Not necessarily bad dreams, sometimes nightmares, but more than that, I remember specifically three separate times where I dreamed about two of my sisters. There are six of us, five girls and a brother. Two of my sisters, my oldest sister and my youngest sister, were talking about weddings. My youngest sister is, in a, this is real, she's in a very serious relationship. Hopefully she'll be engaged soon. I was thinking maybe Christmas, maybe it'll be Valentine's Day. I don't know, but there, there's talk about that. Anyway, she was the bride in both of these dreams. My older sister was helping her plan the wedding. In fact, my mom was in one of the dreams. My mom has passed two years ago, but she was in one of the dreams and just a lot of stuff related to weddings and my family. So when I would wake up, I'd be like, wow. And I would even text my sisters and be like, I don't know what this is a sign of. If you guys know dream interpretation, let me know if that's anything to do with babies. I know different things symbolize different things and I do believe in that stuff and I think it's amazing and I just never really looked it up. I don't know why. I guess I just got distracted with the whole pregnancy, being sick, all that stuff. But my dreams were so vivid, so real. It was cool, but it was also something that I had never experienced before. I always dream, but never to the extent of being so vivid. And I remember specifically those three wedding dreams. Crazy. Another thing that I noticed happening, this was around the same time frame, probably three or four days before I was due to get my period, but I was pregnant and I didn't know it. I noticed always, the phone always rings. I don't even have a house phone. That's the phone attached to my computer. It's ringing right now. <laughs> always when I sit down to film a video, but it's good because I can catch my breath. I noticed that it was really difficult for me to wake up in the morning. I am not a morning person. It's never really easy for me to get up, but this was escalated. It was times a hundred. I would feel like I got hit by a truck in the morning. I was so groggy. I would want to go back to sleep. Sometimes I would go back to sleep for another hour or two past where I usually get up. I didn't really think twice about that because honestly, that would happen to me a lot when I was PMS right before I got my period. As I do more research, I learned that early pregnancy symptoms mimic PMS symptoms because it's the same hormones. It's just that they're a little bit more intense, but I've always gotten really severe PMS, probably PMDD. I've never been diagnosed with it, but two of my sisters get PMS the way that I do, like severe, severe, severe. And one of my sisters got diagnosed with PMDD, so which is premenstrual something disorder. It's just like PMS on steroids. So these symptoms were normal for my PMS, but there were like a couple things that stood out to me that I was like, but this is like a lot. I would also wake up two or th two or three, that makes sense. I would also wake up two or three times a night to go to the bathroom. Now, I am one of those really healthy, drink a gallon of water a day, eat a ton of fruits and vegetables throughout the day. I'm always exercising, I'm one of those people. So it's not really uncommon for me to have to go use the restroom frequently throughout the day. I am always in a public restroom. I am always on the toilet. It's just part of my fitness journey and my life. But this was literally every five minutes. And I would have to wake up two or three times during the night to use the bathroom and I never ever do that. Like that was in the beginning when I first started drinking a gallon, but I think my bladder has stretched or gotten used to it that that was never a problem before. And what's interesting is that only lasted for maybe a week or two. Now every once in a while I'll wake up in the middle of the night, but also part of my morning sickness after I found out I was pregnant and I started to really get sick for eight, 10 weeks, I didn't drink much water. It was the only thing that made me feel really really nauseous, like instantaneously nauseous that I would have to eat something carby right away because it felt like I needed to soak something up. It would turn my stomach sour. I'd feel like things wanted to come up from liquids, but especially water. So I wasn't drinking a lot anyway during that time. But prior to that, before I knew I was pregnant, before I was having any kind of symptoms, before I was sick, when it would have been my PMS time, but I was pregnant, I was going to the bathroom constantly and also waking up in the middle of the night. So that's really when it kind of triggered something's different here along with those other couple of things also probably 
two or three days before I was scheduled to get my period. I feel like I've said that a million times, but just so you guys know, I'm being really specific with where my hormones are and how I was experiencing symptoms at that point so I could help you if you're experiencing any kind of symptoms or if you're trying to get pregnant or maybe not trying to get pregnant and you feel like something funky is going on, but experienced cramping. I experienced cramping very similar to the cramps that you get when you're about to get your period. So I was like, oh, thank God, because I've been so cranky and moody and I can't get up in the morning and all of this stuff. So finally, I'm gonna get it. It's gonna be a bad one, it feels like, and then this will be over. Well, that didn't happen. Also, the moodiness was a level 10. I was just cranky. I was so nasty. I would flip on a dime. My mood was insane. I remember two specific instances where I scared myself. Like, I'm like, who are you? The first one, I was probably the day I should have gotten my period, maybe the day before something like that, or maybe even a day late at this point. And Adam and I went to the park to work out and we were working out on the children's jungle gym. And there was a woman who looked like a grandma with her granddaughter who was young. People are going to say that about me because I'm 42 having my first child, but let's, let's just let that go. But she was older, like she was probably in her mid 60s, early 70s with this really young child. And we were working out and Adam wanted me to film him for his Instagram and his Facebook page. And as he's working out, these people come over and they're using the equipment right behind him so I stopped filming. And he kind of got like a little bit annoyed because I've been bitchy to him the past few days. I didn't just explain, hey, I don't like to film when other people's children are around. There's so much stuff going on with child like I just I don't want to make other people feel uncomfortable I don't want to get other people's children in my videos I've always just been very very sensitive to that instead of saying anything like that back to him I melted down and I got pissed off that he got pissed off and I went from zero to a hundred like that and I wouldn't talk to him for the rest of the workout and he's like I remember specifically like let's just leave I feel like I'm working out alone like this is stupid and he tried to apologize to me and I was like you don't get it there's so much stuff a child and I just went down a road that was ridiculous. And I remember in my head thinking, you are so overreacting, like calm down, girl. But on the other hand, you guys know this when you're PMS and you know when you're hangry or if you've been pregnant, you know, you in your head are like, I am being rational, but you can't stop yourself. That was the first one. The second one I feel like was even worse. So we had just gotten back from a long weekend out of state. We were in California visiting friends and Adam was doing some work out there. And... It was probably nine o'clock at night. We had just driven six hours, we were starving. So we ordered food through DoorDash. We got these salads from Tropical Smoothie, which is right down the street. And the DoorDash guy could not find our building. I had said, I put in there, please hand deliver this to us. Knock on the door, make sure somebody opens it and give it to us. I get this text from Postmates that were DoorDash, whoever I used, that said that your food has been delivered rate your driver. So I immediately called the number and I'm like, I never got my food. And so he said, I left it at your door and I went outside and there was no food there. And I was like, well, where did you leave my food? And he says the number, the unit number. And I'm like, but there is that, no, I'm just going to make up a number. Let's just say it's 632. There's a 632 in every building in this complex. Every building is a different number. There are different streets throughout this complex, but you can't just drop it off at a different 632. Like That's not my house. Go back and get it. So he said he went back and got it. At this point, Adam runs downstairs. We are all the way in the back of our complex, and there's a front gate where you have to be let in to get into the complex. So Adam runs down to outside so because we're on the top floor. So he figured I'll see the guy coming, pulling up because they tell you what kind of car that they drive. We're yelling back and forth to one another. We're both hangry. The neighbor comes outside and she's like, <laughs> my mom would have done something like this. Like, you going out to dinner? Being nosy. And I was like, no, they messed up our order. Blah, blah, blah. Like, please talk to me another time. And which is ironic because that's the last time she ever spoke to me. So I don't know what happened, but Adam is like, I'm going to the front gate. Like this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm on the phone with the guy. He's going to the front gate. The guy is trying to leave. Adam catches the guy leaving, like just gonna leave our food with somebody else and not care. He gets the food, thank God, takes care of it. I emailed DoorDash, like I want my money back, which they did give me my money back. So we come inside and these salads were tiny. They were not great. Adam ordered extra chicken. He didn't get it. He maybe got like two or three 
chicken slices and that's it. Not slices, you know, like strips, chicken strips. We're doctoring our salads with whatever we had in the house and he loves cheese in his salad. Now I don't eat dairy or meat. He's like frazzled and he goes to put cheese on his salad and he likes a lot of cheese in his salad and he poured it in mine by accident. So I turned around and I was like, oh, did you put cheese in my salad? And he was like, oh, sorry. I was like, well, looks like I'm eating cheese tonight. Here, I'll get you cheese on your salad. And I thought in the moment this was funny, I was genuinely trying to be funny, but I took, this is terrible, the bag of shredded cheese. It was like shredded Parmesan. And I dumped the entire bag on a salad. And I was like, that's what you get for giving me cheese. I thought, again, I was being funny, but as it's transpiring, I'm like, what am I doing? And then his face, he was like, are you serious? You just did that? And I was like, huh? And then like, I got all in my feels about it. And I was so self-conscious last night. Like, why did I do that? That was so psycho. And then later in the conversation, for some reason, I accused him of like not being attracted to me and cheating on me. What? I am so not like that with Adam. I am so not jealous. I am so not insecure with him. We are just us. And we've always just meshed and trust each other and been like us. And it's been fine. We've been through a lot of crap together. So I've never once questioned his loyalty. And anyway, even if I had any sort of little doubt, we are together 24 hours a day, seven days a week, up until this point, he's starting his job next week. But what, what? And I knew in that moment, like something was wrong. That night I went to bed. I woke up in the middle of the night twice to go to the bathroom, weird, right? Then I woke up that next morning and I felt like somebody drove a truck, an 18 wheeler Mack truck into my chest. I always get soreness in my chest when I get PMS, but this was next level. I remember going to work out that day in a sports bra and trying to do jumping jacks was one of the most painful experiences of my life. My boobs hurt so bad. And that's what made me take the test because I had never experienced pain to that level. It was the PMS soreness times a quadrillion. Also, my nipples felt very strange, like itchy and weird. And then what continued throughout the first trimester, which I thought was a very interesting and very painful symptom, I heard somebody else say it the other day, and that's why it popped into my mind was when I got cold, because as I got pregnant, like it was, I found out on November 15th, I think. And so we're going through the winter months. If I got cold, my nipples felt like somebody was cutting them with shards of glass. That's how painful it was for me. Thank God it's passed. Thank God, like the tenderness is still slightly there. Again, I'm 12 and a half weeks. So I'm, everybody's diff, nobody knows exactly when the first trimester ends. If it's 13 weeks, 14 weeks, 12 weeks, no idea. But I'm nearing the end of the first trimester, just about in the second trimester. And it's so much better. They still hurt when I jump. They still hurt if Adam hugs me a little bit too tight but light years better than what they were prior. And it's not as cold anymore. It warms up very quickly in Vegas. So it hasn't been excruciating like it was before. The other thing is I just feel like everything, all of my senses were heightened. Good ones, bad ones. I'll get into that in another video because I'm gonna do first trimester symptoms, but I wanted to keep this video basically the symptoms that I was having before I took the test, which are different. It kind of went into it, but they're different than those 12 and a half weeks that I just experienced. 12 and a half weeks of kind of like hell week. What's that called when they initiate kids into sororities and fraternities and they have, is that called hell week? Like that really hard initiation. I feel like that is the first trimester into mom life. Like you are experiencing, what is that called? I know it's called hell week, but it's like called something hazing that I feel like I was hazed. I feel like all mommies are hazed for 12 weeks to make sure we can handle this. Serious. It's, it's bad. So we'll get there. The only other thing that I want to talk about, touch on really quick in this video, cause it got so long. I babbled about taking pictures of kids and pouring cheeses on salads. Do you guys care? Probably not. And I just said cheeses on salads cause you know, <laughs> that makes sense. I experienced what is called implantation bleeding. So after I tested and I tested positive, I talked about all about taking the test and I showed you guys like I vlogged telling Adam I was pregnant, how I surprised him. I got that all on video because I made believe I was giving him a birthday present. I'll post that video up there. 
But right after I took the test, I took the test, I was probably four weeks, right in that time frame, I think it was between four and six weeks, I bled three or four times. I looked it up because I, one of my girlfriends scared the crap out of me and she was like, you need to go to the doctor right away. And I was like, well, the doctor won't take me. Like I called around to different doctors. I did not have a gynecologist in Las Vegas. I moved here in September. I got pregnant in October. I didn't have any doctors yet. I love my gynecologist in New Jersey. I wish I could like transport him here or I could go have my baby there. He was an angel, but which is funny because his name has angel in it, but I don't know if it's a COVID thing. I don't know if it's a, a, a thing. They just need to wait for the baby to be big enough. I'm not sure, but they wouldn't take me until eight weeks. So I'm figuring like, what's the difference if I'm four weeks and God forbid I'm, you know, I'm, I'm bleeding for a bad reason. They'll let me know in a couple weeks. Like if it gets worse and I'm pouring out blood, of course, but it was spotting. So I looked it up and it's called implantation bleeding. One of my friends was like, you need to go to the doctor immediately. You're over 40, you're high risk, you know, scaring crap out of me. But when I looked it up and said it was totally normal, it happens to most women. It's just when the egg or the fertilized egg actually implants against the uterine wall and it sticks. So it's not a bad thing, it's actually a good thing. But I experienced spotting that, I'm assuming, that day. And then within the next like couple of weeks, I had a little spotting here and there. That was it. Freaked out, of course, in my head. That was it, but everything's fine. My first doctor's appointment was fine. My next doctor's appointment is tomorrow. I've not bled once since, knock on wood. Not after exercise or you guys know what I'm saying, exercise. Because I read that you could bleed and cramp after adult exercise, couples workout type of thing. But I've been fine, nothing like that. So 24 and a half minutes later, let's just make sure I went through all of my notes. I did. Let me know if you guys have questions. Let me know what you guys think. I am so sorry for my shortness of breath. I am annoyed that I have to talk like this. So I'm sorry and I apologize if it's annoying to you to have to hear me do that <laughs> a lot. Again, it's part of it, but I am gonna to talk to my doctor about it tomorrow and I'll let you guys know. Just in case it's anything more, but my thought is high blood pressure, but it's still so, so early and I'm so healthy and I exercise every day as much as I can, but it shouldn't be that. Although I've liked salt a lot. Like a lot of things I'm like, that is not salty enough whatsoever. So I don't know. Anyway, I love you guys. I hope you have an amazing day. If you're a mama, or an expecting mama. I hope this helped you. If you're trying, whatever it is, try not to stress. If you're a veteran and you have comments or thoughts or anything you wanna talk about in the comments below, I've learned so much about being a mother and pregnancy and all that stuff from you guys in your comments on my last two pregnancy videos. So, I have these headphones. They are not attached to this whatsoever. <laughs> you can hear me just the same, right? They had nothing to do with anything except the video I was listening to when I was setting this all up on my phone. Wow. That's it. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Mwah.